135. Write balanced chemical equations for the reactions used to prepare each of the following compounds from the given starting materials. In some cases, additional reactants may be required. Okay, let's see if I can do this video. <laughs> I think I think in the middle my voice will kind of like pop back, but I'm a little bit under the weather. Um, but I really want to help you guys out. So <clears throat> without further ado, let's get into letter C. So letter C says that we want gaseous H2S from solid ZN with S, so solid zinc and sulfur, via a two-step process. And then they tell us that the first step first is a redox reaction between the starting materials and then a reaction of the product with a strong acid. Okay, so we know that we're dealing with two steps here, so let's focus from one step at a time. So let's do step numero one, or step hashtag one, right? Whichever is your preference. <laughs> but back in the day, this was a number. So maybe step one or step number one, maybe I'll just do step one. Okay. And now they say that first is a redox reaction between the starting materials. So let's figure out what the starting materials were. Well, we wanted gaseous H2S from solid zinc and sulfur. So by the wording here, if we're coming from this to that, that means that the solid Zn and S were the starting material. They were the reactants. That means that they'll be the left side. And this is what you ultimately want. You want the gaseous H2S as your product. So we need to do a redox reaction between the two starting materials. Those are your reactants. So Zn plus S. Now a redox reaction just means that you're using charges. So if you're using charges and there's a exchange of charges. So exchange of electrons more specifically, because one of them, maybe the zinc or the sulfur, one of them is going to gain electrons and the other one's going to lose it. But we are combining these together to form a product right? Because they say the reaction of that product. So we're going to just use the charges of what Zn and S make. And maybe I will put this over here. Now on the periodic table, Zn is a transition metal. However, zinc only likes to have one charge. Zinc is a famous element uh, for being a transition metal, but it doesn't have multiple charges. Zinc is going to be a plus two charge. And sulfur, it's in group 16 or 6A on the periodic table, just below oxygen, so it follows that trend, and sulfur is a negative two. Now, since we have the charges, we can crisscross these charges to get how many of each we need for our compound. So the Zn crisscrosses down, telling me that I need two sulfurs, this negative two crisscrosses down, telling me that I need two zincs. And when you have multiple numbers that are common, you want to simplify. So with ionic compounds, we need to simplify. Two and two, I could divide each of these by two to get one of each. And that's how many zincs and sulfurs we need in step number one. So our compound would be ZnS. And now they're saying that if we wanted to just add the states, they said that we had solid Zn and S. So this was a solid, this is a solid, and it seems like zinc sulfate, uh, zinc, zinc sulfide, sorry about that, um, is, is gonna be a solid as well, because it's, it's um, <clears throat> ionic. Okay, sorry. I think my voice has come back. <laughs> It has come back for step two. So let's go for it. Step number two. So now, then we have to do the reaction of the product with a strong acid. 
So the product is the ZN. Whoa. The product is ZNS. And we now know that we need some type of strong acid. So maybe I'll just put that here. Strong acid. And we're going to get out the product that we ultimately want, that they said in the beginning. We wanted to produce that gaseous H2S. So we have H2S, and that's a gas, because they told us that it was gaseous. But now, let's see. That's all that they told us. So we know that we're dealing with the reaction of the product, ZNS, with the strong acid. They didn't tell us specifically what the strong acid was. So we have to be creative. Now, just know that in this life, there are six strong acids. So, I mean, technically, you could have picked any six of them, right? Some of them, the easy ones to pick, are HCl, HBr, and HI. There are three other ones that are um, made because of polyatomics, but just know that here's three of them. And you could pick any three that you want, right? We could have picked HCl, HBr, or HI. I guess we'll go with HCl. Now, they don't specifically say here um, what state the HCl is in. Could be a liquid, could be a gas. Um, I guess since we're in gaseous conditions, we can say that this is HCl gas, which is going to be absolutely nuts. Um, but, I mean, technically it could happen. Um, generally speaking, though, at, at um, standard conditions, this would be a liquid. So, they didn't say. So, we'll just add it as a strong liquid, HCl. And now, let's see. Well, we have our H, which is coming from here. We have our S, which is coming from here. But, uh-oh, remember, with balanced equations, you have to have the same elements on both sides. So the H and the S are counted for on the product side. But where's the zinc and where's the Cl? Oh, we have to add that. This is a double displacement reaction because you have two products, uh, not two products, you have two compounds. ZNS is a compound, HCl is technically a compound, so double displacement. The outers go with outers, the ZN goes with the CL, and the inners go with the inners, H2S. So now we just have to find out the compound that is made between zinc and CL. And we do it the same way as above. Zinc is famous because it's the transition metal that only has the one charge, which is a plus two. And the chlorine is in the halogen group. That's group 17 or 7A. So this is a negative one. That group is always a negative one charge. Use those charges, crisscross them down to see what's going on here. So this comes in with the two telling me that I need two chlorines, and this one tells me that I just need one zinc. So when I write the compound, it's got to be ZnCl2. Now we just need to talk about the solubility of ZnCl2 if you want to, um, but just know that on your solubility rules, um, chlorine is generally soluble, which means aqueous, except uh, when it is with some metals, but zinc is not on that list. So this would technically be soluble, and this would be classified as AQ. Now, if we are going to put AQ down for ZNCl, which is totally fine, right? They didn't, speci they didn't specify what state this compound is going to be in. We'll just manipulate the HCl since we're in aqueous, which means that we're in water, all your strong acids will also be aqueous as well. So I'll just put AQ here. But, I mean, this we just did because of solubility, but could you have maybe put, you know, a solid there? Sure. Doesn't really matter to me. The idea here is to just get down those um, compounds here. And these are your two steps. So let's maybe put little stars next to them. <laughs> so here's step one. And then here is step two, and we are done. What do you think?
Okay. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. I love talking to you guys and I hope you're having a great day out there. Keep studying hard. Let's crush those exams, those quizzes, homeworks, whatever it is. I believe in you guys. And I, you know, thank you so much for being part of this community. Thank you for coming here to get help on your classes. We also got physics and math videos on the moment uh, on the channel with more subjects to come. Uh, my brother and I, we, we love helping you guys out and, and thank you so much for, you know, being here. So yeah, with, with that being said, I'll talk to you soon. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.